All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is work on the buttons now. So these are gonna be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna create a button. Okay, and these, these are actual real buttons. The other component, the other style components that we created, these aren't real buttons. This is gonna be an actual real button. Okay, it'll have all the attributes of a button. Okay, um, and we're gonna to have to have two different color schemes. We're gonna to have to have a primary, I think, the, and, and a secondary. Uh, so the primary button is going to be the save button. And it's going to be this blue color and then the secondary button will be reset which uh is going to be a, a darkish color um so what we'll do is we'll make it so that when the user sets it as primary um it's going to have all of the primary properties so i'll create a uh i'll create a type and i'll call this uh let's see what i want to call this uh uh, let's see button props and when it comes to buttons common practice they have a property called variant and the variant pretty much describes the color uh the styles of the button which is typically the background color so for example the primary variant is usually uh blue or it's the main color and then the secondary is just a secondary color and then there's also error danger success uh variant blah blah and typically they have their own colors you can look up uh, bootstrap buttons or color variants, and then you, you can read more about that from there, okay? But we'll have a variant property, and that property is just going to... For now, we'll just have two. Um, we'll have two variants for now, just primary and secondary, okay? And later on, we'll probably have a size variant too, but for now, we'll leave it alone and just have one size. Okay, so whenever the... Whenever it's... Let's see, what's going on here? Why, why is why does the variant prop not want to work okay so whenever the variant prop uh is passed in it's going to be either primary or secondary and we're going to check to see if it's primary or secondary so if variant equals primary we can use the and operator and we can use the css function which comes from styled components to set up a bunch of different css styles conditionally okay so the css uh function is imported up here and what i can do is for the primary variant i can set the background color i can set a, a, a i guess set a, a group of css properties inside the css function which is great okay i'm going to go ahead and set the background color to this blue color that i have from figma um and i think that's pretty much it okay and we'll go ahead and do this again so if the variant is secondary. We will change the color to this gray color, grayish color right over here. And we'll set the default. Uh, we'll set the default um, the default um, properties. And we'll go ahead and set the default styles. So like the width, uh, the padding, font size, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for the width, um, I think honestly it would be better if we had like different sizes for this but for now i'll just set the width to 200 pixels actually no 175 pixels padding uh let's see the top and bottom is going to be smaller in padding i think eight pixels top and bottom uh and let's try maybe 20 pixels left and right we do have width though so that will be a little bit tricky but if we if we don't have width the text will change the size of the buttons which you know i think i'll leave i think i'll get rid of the width for now okay so the padding and then the font size we could probably leave that alone so let's go ahead and test this out so let's see i might also want to wrap this uh inside like a form maybe i think div is probably not the right one i think let's use form instead and what i can do is i can actually put the buttons underneath here so let me just i'm going to put create another div let's create a button and we're going to pass in the variant so it's going to be a primary variant and we'll go ahead and set that okay i'm not sure why it looks like this did i forget oh yeah i forgot to do a couple other things we, we gotta get rid of the outline to none or wait yeah, yeah yeah uh border none uh the padding is way too small so we'll fix that in just a bit font size 16 pixels uh no that's that's way too big that's better color 
white uh font family so that's dm sans perfect though I actually that is a smaller font so we'll change the size I think maybe 18 pixels actually no uh, maybe 16 pixels is better border radius let's not forget that five pixels um I think that is it I do want to change the padding just a little bit let's try 12 pixels uh maybe 10 actually yeah, that, I think 10 is fine though. Like I said, it's because we have we don't have set width, so this it's going to be based off of the padding to determine the, the padding, not the padding. Uh, the uh, the text length is going to determine the width. So if I have a reset button right over here, I'm not sure why? Okay, there we go. And I set to secondary. I'm not sure why my uh, fresh. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, now, one thing that I should mention is that because we have these buttons inside a form, uh, and we click on it, it's going to perform the default behavior, which is going to literally uh, make a post request, or at least it's going to... Uh, you can see that there's that question mark up top. I'm not sure if you can see that. But um, what we need to do is we need to actually... Uh, there's a couple things that we could do. We can set this so that when we click on save, we can... Um, actually, let me do this, actually. Let me set the type of this button to just be a regular button. So if I click on this, this should not trigger, or it shouldn't. I'm not sure why it's doing that. I think for some reason, I think it's because my uh, my hot reload is messed up. Yeah, there we go. So if I click on reset, it shouldn't refresh the browser. However, if I click on save, what's going on? Oh, wait, there we go. There we go, perfect. Okay, I don't even think I need to set the type to that because by default it should be. Yep, perfect. Okay, uh, so when we click on this save button, it's we're going to handle the action, right? So we'll create a function later that will just handle uh, this form. Okay, uh, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to perform some validation and we're going to need to make an HTTP call and then once that's done, um, we're pretty much we're, that's pretty much it honestly. Okay, uh, one last thing is I do want to add some margin between these two buttons, and I do want to move these buttons all the way over here. To do that, we can actually set, we can actually change uh, this div. I'm going to use a flex box instead. So we can actually set the justify content property to be uh, flex end. So that way, that will just push, that should just push this all the way to the end. Again, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what's going on here. Why? Wait, why is this? Why is this right over here? That's weird. Uh, I'm not sure why. Something's going on. Something's going on with the. Imp oh, yeah, I think I know why. Uh, the input field seems like the padding it's overflowing because I think the width, I think the width of the container ends right over here. The input field is uh, overflowing because of the padding. So set the box sizing to border box should fix that. There we go. Perfect. All right, awesome. And the last thing that I'll do. So uh, flex end is perfect. I love flex end with justify content. Last thing that we'll do is we'll add uh, a margin. So I'll just add the margin. Uh, I'll add it for the, it doesn't matter which button we add it to. We'll use inline style because we don't want to set a general margin for all buttons, just this specific button. It's usually better to just create like a, like a utility class and you can just reuse them over and over again. So you can just create like a global CSS. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll not worry about that. We'll worry about that later though. So since the reset button is on the left, we're going to set the margin right to be uh, eight pixels should be fine. If I refresh, perfect. There we go. Uh, again, I'm not sure why my hot reload is messed up. I think it's because um, I'm not, again. I'm not sure why it's messed up. It's kind of weird, but it's okay. All right, perfect. So that's pretty much it for the update command prefix form. Okay, and now that we have a a nice uh, input field, uh, we're pretty much done with that part. Okay. The next, the, the last CSS stuff that we'll have to worry about 
is the update welcome message. So this one, so like I mentioned in the video, this is not an actual input field. This is actually supposed to be a drop down. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to I'm going to have to style a select drop down. But you can only actually style the actual um, the actual uh, select box. You can't style the options, so that's a downside. But that's okay though. And then we'll just go ahead and style the text area. But a lot of these things are going to look very similar to the input field, so it's not going to be the end of the world. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. 